are you and Penny hosting? Do y'all host family for the holidays? Is well, my crazy? family is so big. I've got eight kids. Wow. You know, so the, the, the one minute, there's two in the house and there's a two over, over here. Two of them live in Los Angeles. Yeah. Four live in England and all. We're going to try, though. Okay. We're going to try and get Is that my, yeah. nuts? Oh, my gosh. That's a lot of... Well, that's it's a lot clan. of love. Yeah. That's a lot of clan. That's a, yeah. Well, Christmas... I'm well worn out now. Yeah, <laughs> from being around each other? That's what happens if you haven't got a television. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, wait, that's, this, is, this is Rod preparing for the holidays. You posted this. So, this is two years ago um, at dinner. You're probably wondering why Rod Stewart is peeling <laughs> potatoes this Christmas. Well, we're all gathered here in Florida. There's nine of us, and we've all been given a job. Mine is peeling potatoes. But I really want to thank you all for making this a wonderful Christmas with the new album. Two weeks in the charts at number one. Thank you so much. Merry Christmas. Back to the potatoes. I should expect I mean, that to be shown. I mean, wait, wait. <laughs> Two things. One, congratulations on the hat. It's remarkable. How did it work? It just kept going on. Did it just constantly or every time your jaw moves? Like, what was happening? No, I just had a battery in it. Okay, great. Okay, well, I have so many jokes there. Um, so, are, <laughs> are you well, always... Go on, then, on us a, one of them. Nope, daytime. Um, <laughs> Um, are you, oh, I go with. Where did, where did you where steal them from? <laughs> yeah. You are a naughty are you, girl. <laughs> no. She's no. naughty. No. Are yeah. you? It's a, it never <laughs> even crossed my mind. Mine either, you perv. Um, are, are you always on potato peeling duty? Is this your job? No, uh, no, no. Oh, no? No, no, no? You just got excited about I don't, it? I don't mind doing the dishes when we haven't got, when our chef's not working and Penny yeah. cooks dinner. Yeah. I make sure all the kids help with the dishes, I help with the dishes. Yeah. I'm the cleaner, okay? I love cleaning. I love yeah. doing dishes. My sister loves cooking. I'm like, I don't want to cook, but I will clean any dish. Yeah. It's easier. Yeah. And I'm anal. That's I like being a, That was a riveting point, wasn't it? Yeah. So exciting, this interview right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's just riveting. Um, so wait, speaking of holidays, um, weren't you once banned from all holiday ends? Because I find this very rock and roll. Oh, yeah. This is, uh... What did you do? Oh, you know me. We did it. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, it was uh, it was in the early seventies, and we you know we'd smash up hotels. I know it sounds idiotic, but we were treated so badly, you know, by the staff and the hotel, oh. usually Holiday Inns, that we smashed up a hotel and um, paid the bill. But then we we checked in as Fleetwood Mac in the next hotel <laughs> because they they weren't well known. Oh my so, god! The faces in Fleetwood Mac were still coming up. You oh know. my god, that's amazing! Oh, we've got Sir Rod Stewart here. Give it up! His new album is called The Tears of Hercules, and it is out now. It's a rad title, by the way. Why did you name the title? Why did you ask? Well, it's one of the songs on the album, and it's to point out that men, strong men, tough men can cry. Absolutely. Um, well, later you'll be singing a song called One More Time, so what's that about? Well, you know <laughs> when you split up with the girlfriend? Yes. Well, no, and the but... sex was good. But... Well, I'll put on my imagination right, hat. When you split up with your boyfriend, <laughs> yeah. and your sex was exceptional, but that's all you, were, all you were going out with him for. Okay, yes. And you split up and said, well, let's do it well, upstairs one more time. Oh, this is a great idea. This is a great idea for a song. That's real. You're like, I was there for this, but yeah. Yeah. And then it's kind of fun. Then it's yeah. like the red button, like you shouldn't yeah. do. Yeah, shouldn't do it. I've never yeah. done it myself, have you? Liar. No, honestly, <laughs> I haven't. I've never done it. I've never, never done, done it. it. No, no, I've never more, done that. You know, really. but you... <laughs> Wait! That was amazing. I want it to be a GIF. Uh, there's a special song <laughs> on the album, though, and it's called Touchline. So what's, yeah. what's this about? Um, well, I've, I've played soccer, football all my life, and I was a pro once. <clears throat> but cut a long story short, my dad, we had, there was three of us, three sons, yeah. and we all played football, and he was the manager of the team. He was a good player in his day, too. So he managed the team, and that's him there. That's amazing, yeah. a long time ago. Uh, and he'd pick the team, and he'd be, always be on the touchline, pouring me rain, snow, shouting at us, abuse and everything like that. <laughs> and we loved him for it, you know. But then, of course, he passed on. Yeah. And the song's all about how I find myself doing the same thing with my boys on the touchline, watching my sons play football. I and hopefully, that. That when I'm gone, they'll 
they'll do exactly the same with their sons. Yeah. So it's a, it's a very, it's a manly sort of, sort of song. You well, know? and it's cool though, because not all men show up for games for their kids. Yeah, that's, yeah absolutely. That's yeah. amazing. Yeah. And I think we call it the sideline. So it's the touchline. Yeah, touchline in football oh. sidelines in your football. Okay, okay, right on. Well, that's all. That's about all I know about sports ball, right there. That's sideline. Okay, darling. <laughs> that's let's, okay. let's move on let's quickly. Let's move on quickly. <laughs> You're loving this interview. Okay, so this year marks the 50th anniversary of Rod's album, um, Every Picture Tells a Story, which fe okay, yes, ma'am. You got a groan. Um, it tells a story which features the hit Maggie Mae, which everyone knows. Now, I love that song so much. It's an amazing album, obviously, you got some fans. Um, but I do wanna talk about a favorite of mine. And this is not, I told you in the break, this is, I'm on tour, you know you're always on tour and you're in different mm. cities, right? Well, mm. I was in Seattle and they usually have really great record stores there, like vinyl, and I've always loved vinyl, like since I was a kid, it's like the one thing that was passed down to me and my family from my grandmother, so I love vinyl. And I was in this store and I found, it's never a dull moment, it's your record, and I think it's from like the 70s, but it had, I noticed, and when I picked it up, I was like, oh, I love Rod Stewart, and then I was like, oh, he covered I'd Rather Go Blind, I love that song. And then it turns out it's literally one of my favorite covers of any song that anyone's ever done, not just your voice, the production, like whoever put that together, it, it is so tasteful and so beautiful. And I'm wondering, cause it wasn't like full of them. So why did you pick that song for that, that um, record? Well, uh, Etta James did it first. Yes, yeah. And then the girl out Fleetwood Mac did it, but it wasn't a big hit. Um, what's her name? Stevie, oh, not it. Stevie Nicks. I do one. know Stevie Nicks. Oh, you mean um, 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 uh, she wrote Songbird. Um, yep, I'm blanking. Yeah, me um, too. Anybody know, not Stevie, the other girl. Christine, yeah, yes, yes, Christine yes, yes, McVie, yes, yes. She did it, and I heard her do it, so I decided to do it. But, yeah. Uh, and it was an afterthought. I was in the studio with Ronnie Wood. You know Ronnie is, don't you, with the Stones? And we had nothing to do, and we said, let's have a go, rather go blind. We had three bottles of wine, and we did it in two takes. Okay, two I was, takes. I was literally going to ask you if that's what I feel like. The two things I love for my career, it was literally just like so easy. It yeah. flowed so easily. We didn't yeah. work at it, it wasn't overproduced. Yeah. And it was just like the moment. Yeah. That's what it sounds like. Yeah, that's how it ah. was. And people love it. Really so love. lesson learned. I just gotta have two bottles of wine and record yeah. some music and it'll be magical. So is it is it true that you and Ronnie are back in the studio? You were just talking about Ronnie Wood, so are y'all yeah, back? Yeah, yeah. Ronnie's been spending a lot of time digging up um, a lot of old faces stuff from the early seventies. Yeah. And we were putting it all back together. It was about 60 odd tracks. Wow. So, and I said, Ronnie, don't think I can't sing in the same key as you, you know. Change the key. So you, yeah. We, we, you, I suppose we could, yeah, but that'd be cheating, wouldn't it? No. Because you have to re record it again? No, God. And my female time of the month, I lower those songs. My vocal cords are doing different well, things. Well, no, but songs, that, have you found any you did in the 70s? Nope, I was not a no, thought. No, you weren't a yet. singer then, were you? <laughs> I was born oh, in 82. I wish I was dead. <laughs> nope. I'm still jet lagged. No, no. But I would have been amazing in the 70s. I feel like I missed yeah. my time. Mm. Um, might I suggest, though, wine? Because y'all did really well with wine before you and Ronnie. Yeah. So might I suggest some wine? Good idea. Maybe you'll hit some <clears throat> notes again there. <laughs> so how do you keep your voice strong, though? This is one thing I, I ask vocalists all the time, because it's different for all of us, and we all yeah. have different ranges. Well the, well, the older you get, it's like being an athlete, you really got to look after. There are only two muscles. That yeah, bang together. Boop, 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 yep. So you just they've got to rest, tons of water, not too much caffeine, plenty of sleep, and uh, warm up and warm down. Yeah, I'm good at all of that except for caffeine. Yeah. Yeah, I love coffee and tea. Yeah. Yeah, and I just refuse. I'll just sound like Janis Joplin. It's fine. Jan, yeah, what a singer she was. Exactly. Oh. It was quite a career. She used to chase me and Ronnie around the room, trying to get into our trousers. She was trying to get, <laughs> trying to get one more time. Yeah. Or was there ever a first? <laughs> No, I love that. So wait, for, I heard that Frank Sinatra, I actually heard that about Janis Joplin. I'm like, you crazy Texas chick. Okay, um, but Frank Sinatra gave you advice one time, which is amazing to say. That was amazing to say. Yeah. He said, like, pack it up. What, what is that? <laughs> pack it up, he said, you, you, you know, no, seriously. Um, he's, his daughter is a godfather to some of my kids and I met him a few times. Oh. And he gave me this advice for singing, you know, sing underwater, swim lengths underwater. So oh. what I do, and I do it with a brick as well, you know. Because it expands your lungs. Yeah. So you can get more, more air capacity. Swimmers have so much, yeah. such great lungs. Yeah. yeah. That's true. That's true. Okay. Well, everybody get in the pool.